Hello and welcome to the video related to the second chapter of the book Interaction Design Beyond Human Computer Interaction, the fifth edition. The chapter has the name The Process of Interaction Design. And in this chapter we will discuss a little bit about interaction design, the stakeholders' environment and the stakeholders themselves, design approaches and A-B testing. Interaction design. One of the process used for interaction design uh, is the double diamond process. So the double diamond has four stages. Discover, define, develop and deliver. In the discover phase, the designers focus on the user to understand the user, their needs, their wishes, and empathize with them. In the define phase, they focus on the user's issue. What are the difficulties that the users face? Is there any issue that we can fix? And then we get into a decision point where we need to define one problem that it needs to be solved. After we define the problem, we move on to the development phase where different for solutions are developed and tested with the users and reiterated until we reach the deliver stage. In the deliver stage, the product ta takes its final form and the decision point there is where to stop, where the product is ready to get, to get into the market. The design process, as in user-centered design, is described in uh, the interaction design book. And an easier sketch to understand it is the, the user-centered design circle. So what we do is first we start with user research. We create a prototype. There are different uh, fidelities of prototype. And then we evaluate the prototype with the users and collect user data. And this is an uh, iteration process and reiteration process. So we do the circle again yeah. and again until we decide that we are satisfied. Now the different stages and phases can seem pretty rigid and easy to separate, but in practice it's not like that. This is the design uh, Quiggle, if I pronounce it correctly, correctly, as my uh, as English are, is not my first language. So this shows that the design process is messy. It starts really messy, and then as the time passes and we work on the solution, the design process gets more refined and straight. So how the double diamond and the user-centered design can be perceived is in the following way. Get to know the user, do user research and understand their issues. It's the first part of the two phases of double diamond, discover and define. The development of the solutions we can place in this phase, the user-centered design circle, where different solutions are developed and evaluated. Let's move on to user, stakeholders' involvement and their environment. We saw again this image and we will keep seeing it from the article The Impact of Human-Centered Design uh, Workshops in Strategic Design Projects. We can see uh, the participation of the different users. So in the participatory design, the participation of the users are the highest. The same with the user-centered design, the participation of the users is also high. Later we will talk a little bit more about the involvement of the, of the stakeholders and these different mentalities on design. Listening to the users is not enough. 
Henry Ford, the inventor of the cars for a um, middle class American family, said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. The issue here is that everyone uses this code, but most people actually use this code to show that people don't know what they want. They do know what they want. The issue was that we don't know how to listen. So horses was what they have, what they had back then. The point here was to go from a place A to place B as fast as possible. This was the whole meaning. This is what an interaction designer should have understood. So the materials sometimes don't play role in the first place. They, we need to understand what the users mean with what they say. The user's environment is also important. Think about trying to use a touch screen or a cell phone with big gloves. Will you be able to um, press the buttons as easily as without the gloves? Here is an example of the user in health-related environments that uh, I have published uh, some years ago that says that the user is always in the middle, which is also called in this case the patient, but the designers usually look at the user from different perspectives. The first one is uh, the condition of the user when it comes to healthcare. Is it a breast cancer patient, a prostate cancer patient, a multiple sclerosis patient? Does the condition make them feel fatigue or make them more stressed or um, make them have pain? So this is the first, the first lens that they are looking from. The second one was the cultural perspectives on the condition. So when we think about breast cancer, we think about women. Breast cancer is a condition that men can have as well. So a male having a female condition, because this is what the public thinks uh, most, may not feel as comfortable to share it as a female having breast cancer condition. A final lens is the conditions culture. In the breast cancer for females, the culture is that the women communicate with each other, support each other and raise awareness to other women. This is not the case for the prostate cancer patients. Even though both patients need the support of others, in one case it is common in the culture of female breast cancer to share the experience, to share the knowledge, while in the other case you keep the experience hidden or more private. So when, you, when we design for health, there are different lenses that we need to apply before we read to the specific user. Design approaches. We talked about the user-centered design and this is mainly what the course is focused on. To be in service with, to the user, to try to understand the user and give them solution that impress them in the sense that they 100% as much as possible satisfy their needs, even though they haven't de described it as well. It's an iterative process. It happens again and again and again. And it passes through three main stages, user research, prototype and evaluation. So here we can see different approaches. There aren't the only ones. But an example is participatory design, which focus again on the user but 
The mentality of participatory design is different. It comes from a Scandinavi- Scandinavian school and it, that it started in the 80s about the involvement of the factory personnel in the decisions taken, f- taken for them when it comes to the technology that they use, as far as I remember. This is the story. So in the participatory design, everyone is equal and every uh, opinion must be heard. In the activity centered design, the focus is on people's behavior and actions, while in the system design, we look the technology and the, um, the people as different actors of full system. We're looking at the system as a, as a whole. In the rapid expert design, the um, experts inform the design uh, without uh, getting much support from the users. And this is again the image about participatory design and user-centered design and the other design approaches. And we can see that the participatory design and the user-centered design have a common overlay. We will finish this video with the A-B testing. A-B testing is the test of two different devices or interfaces with the users. So a part of the users use the design A and the part of the users use the design B. And based on their opinions and their performance, designs are the best. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.